what the goal of the, the exercise is going to be is to essentially try and calculate uh, uh, RAA, okay? Um, really, the, we're, gonna, we're really gonna try and calculate the numerator in RAA, which is uh, the cross-section of, of, let's say, producing pions as a function of PT and as a function of uh, rapidity, okay? Now, uh, the, uh, the way that, that we typically do this, okay, um, is that uh, the that we essentially have to sum up different what, uh, what are what are called PT hat bins, okay? And these PT hat bins are essentially um, uh, it, so the way that you, that, that, you, the, 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 that we will be running Pythia is essentially we want to specify what is the PT that is happening into in, inside of these two to two scattering. Okay, so the PTI will essentially give, it will perform this 2 to 2 scattering for you. Okay, and will give you these two outgoing partons. And the momentum that is being exchanged in this propagator, okay, uh, you can change what that is. Okay, uh, and, and in particular, this is what, what is called a PT hat. So, so if you want to essentially try to describe the, the cross section of pions as a function of, of PT, really what you would have to do is you would have to sample a whole bunch of uh, 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 values that a whole bunch of ranges, so to speak, of what this PT is allowed to be, okay? And for, uh, for each and every one of those PTs, PT hats, so to speak, uh, you, would, you will have uh, an associated cross-section for, for this process to happen, okay? So in order to get the, the, the cross-section that you can measure in an experiment, uh, what you need to do is you need to sort of bin uh, in NPT, in uh, the, the, um, the, the different partons, sorry, the different, the, the different hadrons, and you need to multiply by the associated cross-section that comes from this card cat scattering. Okay. So now comes the, 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 the part sort of for the, for the hands-on session. So hopefully uh, everybody has uh, downloaded the Docker container, okay? And at this point, uh, we will be running it. Note that you absolutely have to sort of create uh, a, a file. So I guess I, yeah, I guess I should have said that earlier. So let me, let me uh, switch back to uh, the very first slide that I didn't go over, but it's still gonna be on the lecture notes. Okay, so the first thing that you guys need to do is you need to create a folder and that folder is going to be accessible outside of the Docker container. So to create a folder outside of the Docker container, so I use the percent sign basically to, uh, to, uh, to, to label instruction that I want you to run outside of the Docker container. So I just want you to make a directory that is going to contain matter and LBT results like this, okay? And then the idea is that if we run this Docker container over here, so this is a Mac instruction, but uh, if you've listened to um, the um, instructions that James gave on, on, on um, uh, Monday, you can, you, you, the, you can also figure out what the associated um, uh, command you need to run in, in Linux as well. But the idea is that uh, this, this dash V command here is essentially mapping uh, uh, a folder that exists on your uh, local machine to a folder that exists inside of the Docker container and it's gonna be created here, okay? And this way, um, if, even if you uh, quit the, the Docker container, you exit the Docker container, your results are still going to be saved inside of the, the folder on your, on your local machine, okay? So, uh, okay, so once everybody is done, uh, creating this uh, uh, directory and starting up the Docker container, uh, let me know by, by using the, the, the uh, Zoom poll. Okay, yes for when you're done and no for when you're not done. No can also mean that you need a little more time. Yes.
How are we doing, Christine? 14 to 13 with 123 people logged on. Um, okay. So by far, I, I would interpret that as most people are still working. Okay, fair enough. If you're a no and it's not because you're still working, but because you're having difficulties, just remember, please put a question in the um, in the slack. Right. And you can find the slides on the Indico. So if you want to copy and paste the um, copy and paste the commands, the easiest is probably to um, look at the slides. Right. Okay. There's one question. I don't know if I did something wrong, but there are several gigabytes of downloads that someone's waiting on. I'm going to take that as a yes, you probably did something wrong. No, not necessarily. So what's going to happen is because the, the, there, there's a, okay, so let me, let me go through what, what's happening here. So what, what the reason why I'm done with this, this extra Docker container is that inside of the Docker container, we also have a realistic hydrodynamical simulation that is present. Okay. And, uh, and this realistic hydrodynamic simulation is, is what's taking a lot of uh, a lot of space. Okay, so the the goal is um, I will I will I, I will go over a little bit of some of the some of the um, some of the, the the switches that we're going to be playing around with today, and also um, let me explain also where where okay. So what the, the file that we're going to be editing today with all of the switches is going to be inside of a Jetscape user XML. And the actual hydrodynamical profile is uh, going to be, it is, is present in this folder over here inside of the Docker container. Okay. So the two files that we're, that, that, that we're really going to be playing around with is, is the jetdata.h5 file, which actually contains the entire hydro history. Okay. And um, the initial dot HDF5 file that is that, that is going to be in this side uh, inside of this folder, this is the um, file that actually contains the uh, the the collisions. The, the, so, in a nucleus nucleus collisions, typically you would have more than one more than two nucleons that collide. Okay, and this uh, the, the the distribution of where the nucleonic collisions inside of a nucleus nucleus collisions are. Are, are sort of scattered around and 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 uh, in the initial condition, and that's that's where this initial HDF5 file actually contains, right? So this essentially tells uh, after you after Pythia generates the partons, right? This essentially tells you where where to put the partons in. Okay. So the framework is essentially going to pick one of the one of these scattering centers and put in your your the 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 two hard partons that Pythia typically generates. Okay. Okay, so if it takes seriously gigabytes, I think that with everybody around the world, that's going to be, um, that's going to take them quite some time to download because the quality yeah. of internet connections varies widely. That's right. That's right. So what I'm going to go over then uh, is essentially, I'm going to go quickly go over the, um, uh, okay, so what I can do is since I already have that on, into my, uh, on my laptop, I can I can essentially show them what to do, okay, and uh, then the idea would be uh, to do to essentially run what I showed them, but just to scale it up at at a larger scale. We generate more events in such a way that we sort of have a more reliable uh, RAA or, or or cross section that we can use to to calculate things. Okay, so let me let me let me go over the 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 Jetscape user XML and a few, a few of the things that we will be changing. Okay, so uh, okay, so these this is the the, the typical uh, user XML that uh, uh, I've generated here, and events is telling you how many jets uh, how many Pythia events that you want to essentially generate, okay, for PT had been, 
and uh, and this reuse hydro is telling that I'm going to run these 200 events using the same hydrodynamical profile. Okay, if you reduce this number to something smaller, then you would have to have the associated number of hydro. So if I if I said and uh, and reuse hydro is 20, I would need to have 10 hydro profiles that I can feed into the uh, th that are they're essentially present inside of this folder, right? So if I had 10 hydro profiles, I would need to put them inside of uh, sample hydro files and I need to label them event one, uh, I need to label them event zero through event nine, okay? Uh, I will get to that in here, okay? Uh, the random seed over here, we're going to, we're going to be able to, uh, we, we're, we're going to set that to one. And the reason is that um, we, you want to have the, the same string, so to speak, of uh, random numbers generated. Okay, in such a way that we can sort of cross compare results between different people. Okay, if you were to do a real uh, analysis, you would set that to zero, and then your seed essentially becomes tied to your uh, uh, to your clock time, and it becomes really a, a much more a, a, a random number. Okay, but for the purposes of this, we're going to set that to one. Okay, now over here, uh, we, I'm going to actually comment out this piece over here that specifies the the Trento profile. Okay. Uh, and the, the common command is, 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 is given by these lines over here. So the uh, uh, less than symbol, the exclamation mark and the two dashes followed by the two dashes and the, and the, and the greater than symbol. So we're gonna comment out this piece, okay? The different PT had bins that, that we're gonna be running, you can change the min and the max here. So that gives you the range in this, um, in this propagator over here over which you are sampling the cross section. Okay, and this is the square, square root of energy. We're going to leave that at, uh, at 5 dB. Um, and we're going to be, be changing this a little bit. Okay, uh, we will turn this off as well because we don't need pre equilibrium dynamics. Uh, we don't, uh, hydro profile, yes. We, with this, we will leave on because we need to tell, uh, tell the, the framework where to go get it. Okay. And uh, the, the last uh, switch that I want to talk about here is, is this switch over here, which has to do with INVAC. So uh, INVAC essentially behaves a little bit differently uh, if you are um, doing this in, in um, if, you're, if, if you're using it inside of either MATTER or, or LVT. Um, in, in MATTER, what it means is literally whether or not you're in the vacuum. So if you're in the vacuum, you're using the, 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 the vacuum splitting function. And if you say in vac set to zero, then you would use the medium modified splitting function. Okay. Uh, as far as this in vac uh, uh, flag is concerned for LBT, the idea is that um, because LBT is only really valid in the medium, uh, if you set it on, basically you will run LBT. And if you set that to off, you would turn LBT off. Okay, let me see if, uh, yes, so I have explained all of this stuff. Okay, okay, right. So this is sort of the, the instructions here. Uh, let me just move this thing a little bit so I can see. Okay, so that's, that's the, the, these are the instructions. So we're gonna go into the build directory and in the build directory, we, once we edit the XML file, we're just gonna go do run Jetscape and we're gonna specify the, the, the configuration file as, as usual, as you've seen on many other lectures. And in this case, this is what this is going to do is going to generate two, fi two output files. It's gonna generate a test.out, the usual test.out uh, that we've seen before. And it's gonna, going to, do, uh, to generate this cross section, the, that file. And this cross section really contains cross section of associated with this PT hat, okay? Then after that, the idea is that we want to copy over uh, the out, these two output files inside of matter LBT results in such a way that once we, if, if you end up closing over the weekend, the Docker container, that uh, everything is still exists on your home directory. So once you, once, once you restart the Docker, you will be able to, to see these uh, guys there, okay? Um, then, um, so just copy this over, then run final state hadron. So now we're still in the, inside of the, the, the build directory. We're gonna run final state hadrons uh, on the test.out to output the final hadrons. And then we're gonna copy that over to uh, matter LBT results, okay? In such a way that if you quit the Docker container, everything is still uh, saved. 
So the idea is over the weekend, what I would, what I would like you guys to do is I would actually like you guys to do a, a run with four PT head bins, okay? Uh, ranging between zero and, and 200 GB, right? So four evenly spaced bins is fine with me. You can do 100, sorry, 100 to 125, 125, 150, 150, 175, 175, 200, okay? And uh, I will show you very, uh, very quickly now how to do this for a small number of events, okay? But uh, for the purposes of, 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 of this run, uh, that, that essentially is going to be your homework assignment uh, over the weekend, I actually want you to do this with many, many more events. 2,000 would be a good number, but if, if that takes too long, you can, you, can, you can reduce that number, okay? To whatever is, uh, to whatever is sensible. Um, okay, so at this point, I think this brings me to my, um, to the end of my uh, uh, slides here. Okay, and let me quickly stop sharing my screen here and let me really quickly go inside of the Docker container. Okay. Let me just very quickly here copy over the command, make sure that everything gets loaded up properly. And then as soon as I'm inside of the, yeah, I can take a quick break at this point while I uh, uh, spin up my Docker container. Okay, so why don't we take, uh, um, how long do you think it will take after, you, after you've I got mean, everything up? It's, it's, it's really not very long, not very long at all. Okay, so let's take a, let's take a 15 minute break okay. and come back um, at 1035 US Eastern time. And then it looks like we're a little ahead of schedule. So the plan is that we're going to start um, Yasuki's talk a little bit early as well. And this maybe gives people a chance, if possible, to catch up on the downloads um, to see if they can get that far. All right. Yeah. 1035, everybody. Okay. Okay.